In the grim darkness of the far future, there's blood. A whole lot of blood. When I'm painting in the grimdark style, I'm pushing for as much realism as I can get. And when you consider that both the fantasy and the sci-fi versions of this hobby both revolve around war, it's fairly simple to assume that actually there's going to be blood and chances are there's going to be a lot of it. With the nice desaturated colour palettes that you see in this style of painting, adding a few bits of blood splatter or a few blood streaks can actually be a really good way of adding some visual interest to your miniatures and in some cases can actually really help to tell their story. Now there are a whole lot of products on the market and a lot of techniques out there for achieving a nice good blood splatter effect but today we're going to have a look at trying to get as realistic an effect as we can. I generally find that products like the Tamiya Clear Reds and the Blood for the Blood God tend to be very bright and saturated and actually are good for showing a nice recently spilt blood or still wet blood but aren't so good at showing that kind of dried blood that you would expect when painting on a vehicle, on armour plating or on terrain. Now firstly we have to take a look at what we're aiming for. If you've ever seen the TV show Dexter you know exactly what we're going to be looking at but if you haven't, I heartily recommend you go watch it. It is superb. Now, as any good forensic technician will tell you, blood splatter can seem random, but actually there are a lot of patterns behind how it appears. And that is kind of what we want to achieve doing this method. Now, while it's easy to just slap a load of blood for the blood god on your miniatures and have at it, Unfortunately, it's just not that realistic. It's very good at showing a freshly drawn blood, but actually it doesn't stay like that for long. So I want to achieve the look of blood that has sat around for a little while, has dried up for a bit and congealed somewhat. Now anyone who's cut themselves badly will know when the blood exits you at first, it's a lovely bright red colour. Now this is because while it's in your body, it has oxygen bound to the haemoglobin in your red blood cells, which gives it that lovely bright red colour. Now as the blood is left to sit and to dry out a bit, the oxygen then disappears, which leaves that lovely rusty brown colour in the end. To replicate this, I could just take the blood for the blood god and mix a little bit of brown in it, but we've got something a little bit better. Adding some typhus corrosion to that blood for the blood god not only darkens it down to a lovely reddish brown that really looks like dried blood, but the little bits of texture contained within it also give the impression of small bits of congealed blood. Beautifully disgusting. I'm not just going to slap this on however, we are shooting for realism, so I need to try and get a nice random looking pattern like we would in real life. I'll start off the process by mixing up the blood for the blood god and the typhus corrosion. I recommend for a start going a little bit heavier on the typhus corrosion just to add a little bit more of that pigment into it and to give us a nice dark starting point. Grabbing out an old brush I'll then add this to the area of the base that I want it on by gently stippling it on in random patterns. I will build up a couple of slightly larger areas and then I'll let this all dry. Now it's all dry. This will give me the bulk of the blood. We need to replicate that splatter effect however and there are multiple ways of doing this. The easiest way that I tend to use is to apply it with a small piece of sponge or foam. I use these bits which are actually the inserts from a KR case. The foam itself is very similar to what Games Workshop used to put inside their blister packs and this works beautifully for this purpose as it is a little bit more dense, the gaps in between the foam aren't quite so big, so actually for a small spatter effect it works beautifully. Having mixed up some more of the blood for the blood god and typhus corrosion, I'll then dunk the corner of the foam in, and like when dry brushing, I'll use some kitchen roll to remove quite a lot of the paint. Now using a gentle stippling motion with this foam, it will give a lovely random splatter effect. It's important to be quite gentle here as putting down too much pressure may cause it to smudge and to smear across the surface. 
Normally I'd do this with the Blood for the Blood God and Typhus Corrosion mix and then also do a very gentle pass with just pure Blood for the Blood God. If I wanted to add in some more recent looking blood. For an even more realistic effect, adding in some fresh blood right in the center of these larger blobs will really finish it off. This technique can also be achieved by using a drinking straw or by using an airbrush. If you dip an old and fairly wide brush into the mix and then holding it in position, fire air through the brush either by using the drinking straw or by using an airbrush that's just shooting only air. This will give you a lovely random splatter effect. This is generally more effective if being used on terrain or vehicles though, as it is pretty random and does have a tendency of spraying out pretty wide. For smaller surfaces, such as a nice slender power sword on this Zephyrim, we can use the same method, but we do need to be a lot more careful and a lot more exact when applying the effect. For something like this, I generally prefer to grab out a nice old and small brush. I'll find the area where I want the blood to be coming from, whether it be a cutting edge, the teeth of a chain axe, or the tips of a weapon on something like a lance or some lightning claws. At this point, I'll lay down a small quantity of the blood effect, and then using this small brush, I'll start doing some very quick and very light brush strokes radiating away from this area. This will give a series of very small streaks of blood. To push this effect even further, I'll add a little bit more at that point of contact, and then following it drying, some spots and specks of blood can again be added using the foam technique. But be careful here, as mentioned, it's very easy to go overboard, and often less is more when it comes to effects like this. So there we go guys, lovely and simple, but so much more effective and so much more realistic than just slapping a bit of blood for the blood god or Tamiya Clear Red on it. When we're painting in the grimdark style, it really is about trying to get that realism. And small techniques like this, whilst does seem quite minimal in the grand scheme of things, can actually really help to build up that realism and to real build up that immersion. As I said earlier, it is very easy to go overboard with effects like this. And I will say that generally less is more. So I do recommend that you try this out a few times, whether it be on spare weapons or on old models, just to get an idea of what you like the look of and what you're comfortable with. Obviously, the amounts will be very different if you're painting an Imperial Guardsman against a Corn Berserker. If you've taken some value out of this video, then please hit that like button down below and leave a comment to tell me what you think. If you want a load more grimdark tutorials, then please take a look at my previous videos and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the ones that are to come. And if all else fails, guys, remember, spray it black and start again.